Good morning, scholars. Welcome to another day of guided reading with Miss Rossi on YouTube. If you have watched all of Miss Rossi's videos so far, I want you to wiggle your fingers. If you've watched every single one of Miss Rossi's videos and you've learned something, grab your hands. If you're proud of yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. Really nice job. A lot of you have watched all of my videos, which means your brain has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Even though we can't be together in the classroom, you're still learning with YouTube, which is awesome. So I'm very proud of you if you've watched all of my videos. If you have not watched all of my videos, they are all on our YouTube page that you're on right now. So you can go back and watch any one that you want, okay? All right, let's get started today. We are going to start with a little warm up. And before we ask our questions, we're going to look at who was featured in our pictures today. So as you can see on the top picture, we have Miss Cherney leading a Socratic seminar in DePaul. So big shout out to all of our DePaul scholars. This picture was on picture day. It, everyone looks so nice. Show me connection if you remember our picture day. Yeah, you guys did an awesome job. So here we have Miss Cherney's talking to DePaul about our Cinderella stories and who you admire in our Cinderella stories. And the reason why I chose that picture is because today we are going to read a Cinderella story in guided reading. And I chose the Cinderella story because we just finished our unit on Cinderella stories. So you guys have a lot of schema or knowledge on Cinderella stories. So big shout out to DePaul. All oh, you guys look excellent in that picture. On the bottom picture, I want to shout out Faith and Sean, who do such a nice job in this picture with their fingers in the text. I love how focused Faith and Sean are on their reading. We were practicing reading through the word on the day that this picture was taken. And so Sean and Faith worked so, so, so hard. So nice job to those UC friends. If you have not been in a picture yet, don't worry. We have lots more days and lots more pictures to put up. So be ready, be on the lookout for you, for yourself. All right, let's answer this question before we start reading. What can you do if you are reading a book and you get stuck on a word? What can you do? Pause your video and say what you can do now. Nice job if you said out loud, if you get stuck on a work, you can use one of our many reading strategies. You can cross check, you can. You can read through the word, you can. You can chunk your letters, you can. You can self correct, you can. Yes, and you also can just try your best on it. You can go back and fix it. You can try your best to read the sounds that you see. But what you are not going to do is you're not going to guess, you're not going to skip words, and you're not going to make up sounds because you guys are almost second graders and we definitely can't do that in second grade. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Awesome job. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our first strategy. So we know that this week we're practicing reading through the word. This is a strategy that many of you are already good at, so I'm going to try to quiz you today. I'm going to try to test you. When we read through the word, we look for a couple of things. So we look for our blank, our blank, and our blank. I want you to answer what we look for. If you need to use your hands, of course you can. Pause your video and say what we look for when we read through the word. Nice job if you said we look for our blends, ends, and vowel teams. Everyone together, we look for our blends ends and vowel teams. So when we're reading through a word, we have to look for those blends that we know. We look at the end of the word to see how the word ends. And we look at our vowel teams so that we can read every single, yes, we're reading every single sound. We're reading, are we skipping sounds? Are we making up sounds? Are we guessing sounds? No, all right, let's go ahead and practice. Let's see if you got these answers right. We look for our blends. We look for our ends, we look for our vowel teams, and we read every single sound. Show connection if you got that correct. Love that, awesome job, friends. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's practice some reading through the word. I want you to pause your video and say what blend, end, or vowel team you see in this word. Pause your video and do that now. Nice job if you didn't get tricked. There is no blend in this word. Oh, Miss Rossi got tricked. There is a blend in this word, but the blend in this word comes at the end of the word. So this is kind of like a blend and an end together because our blend is at the end. So our blend is, our blend is, 
and we definitely have a vowel team in the middle of this word, say the vowel team that you see. Nice job if you said O-A. I see two vowels that are going walking, and I know that when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So O-A says, O-A says, O, O-A says, Let's get ready to read through the word. Take your finger, put it underneath the beginning sound. We're reading together on two, one, two. Oast. Again, oast. All together, the word is, the word is coast. The word is coast. A coast is like an edge that is near the water. So people that live on the coast of the United States live near the water. They live on the sides of our country and they live on the coast. Let's go ahead to the next word and let's practice. All right, I want you to pause your video and I want you to say out loud what blends, ends, and vowel teams you see. Pause and do that now. Ooh, I see a end and a vowel team in this word. Do we have a blend in this word? No, no blends in this word, but we do have an ending and we do have a vowel team. Raise your hand if you found out that the ending, if you figured out that the ending is E-R. Awesome, E-R says er, E-R says. And our vowel team, I see two vowels that are going walking and those vowels are E and A. And I know that when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So E-A says, E-A says, E, E-A says, all right, we're ready to read through the word because we found our blends, ends, and vowel teams. Take your finger and put it underneath the beginning sound. We're reading together on two, one, two. E, T, R, faster. E, T, R, all together. The word is heater. The word is heater heater, like I have to turn on my heater. Now, some of you might have noticed that you already know the word heat. So you might have said heat, er, heater. Let's do it all together, get ready. Heat, er, heater, your turn. Nice job doing heat, er, heater. Let's go on to the next practice word. All right, our last practice word for the day. Look for your blends, ends, and vowel teams. Go ahead and pause your video and try to read through the word now. Nice job if you found our beginning blend, brr. BR says brr, BR says. Our ending is the word, is the letter Y. And remember, Y says y or E, it says. And in this word, and a lot of times when it comes at the end of the word, Y says E, Y says. All right, so we found our blends, our ends, and now I see a vowel team in the middle of this word. What vowel team do we have in this word? Nice job if you said A, I, and I know that when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. So A, I says, A, I says, A, A, I says, Yep, and if you're dabbing with that, awesome job, because we know that AI says A. So let's read through the word. Take your finger, put it underneath the beginning blend. We're reading together on two, one, two. Brr, A, N, E. Again, brr, A, N, E. All together, the word is, the word is brainy. The word is Brainy. Brainy is another word for smart. Or if someone is brainy, that means they're intelligent, they work hard, they're very smart. I gave you that word to try to trick you a little bit because we have blends and, and vowel teams. So if you got that word right, you send yourself some energy. Very proud of you. Now we're going to review what it means to make an inference. Remember that we make an inference, we're making a guess. We're making A, but we're not just guessing about anything. We're guessing based on text evidence. We're guessing based on, and with our text evidence, we also need our schema. We need to use our, and schema is what you know. Schema is, all right, hands up. Back down too slow. Let's try again, hands up. All right, we need our text evidence. We need our, and our schema, and our. 
All right, we need text evidence and schema. We need R. If your fingers were up and your voice was on during that, awesome job. You're learning, you're growing. Let's keep going. We know our sentence them in order for us to make a guess or an inference is in the story I read blank. And then we give our text evidence. We give our. So that makes me think, ooh, I'm going to make an inference. I'm going to make a. So in the story, I read blank. So that makes me think blank. So we're using our text evidence and our schema, which is all that stuff that we have in our head in order to make a guess about the story. Now, remember, authors don't always tell us the answers to some questions. And if the author doesn't tell us the answer, that is when we need to guess or make an inference using our text evidence and our schema. So today we're gonna practice using text evidence and schema to make some inferences or some guesses based on our book today. Now we're gonna be very excited to see that our book today is Cinderella. And the reason why I know you guys are so excited about this book is because before we started learning from home, we just finished our unit on Cinderella stories. And we learned in this unit that every single Cinderella story has four different elements. We call them elements of Cinderella stories. Now let's see who can tell me what are the four elements of Cinderella stories. Pause your video and say out loud, the four elements of Cinderella stories. If you don't know, just try your best. Go ahead and pause your video now. Oh, I'm so excited to see who got this question right. Okay, we know that every Cinderella story has good characters. Every Cinderella story has bad characters or evil characters. Every Cinderella story has a magical element. We know that all Cinderella stories have some type of magic. Show connection if you agree. And all Cinderella stories have a proof of identity. They have a... And remember, the proof of identity is how the character finds out who Cinderella is. So those are our four elements of Cinderella story. And in this Cinderella story today, you are going to find all four of those elements because you're already experts at this. Nice job. Now, I want to take a minute here to say that we finished in Wit and Wisdom, our Cinderella unit, and now we've started our unit on animals. It's about animals and we're going to learn so much about different features of animals all around the world. So if you have not started learning about animals, please go watch Miss Cherney's videos on YouTube because she is teaching, just like I'm teaching here, she is teaching you guys about creature features and you get to read new books and do new papers and learn all this new things just like we did about with Cinderella stories, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started reading our book. I want you to pause your video and read through these pages now. Awesome reading. Let's go to the next page. Pause your video and read through these pages now. Oh, I wonder if any of you were showing connection when you were reading these two pages. Because there are some things in this book that I know that we've read in other books. Let's go ahead to the next page. Pause your video and read through these pages now. Nice reading through the words on these pages. There should have been a couple of words that you might not have known. So I know that we didn't guess. I know that we read through the words. If you did guess, I want you to go ahead and back and fix your mistakes now. Go ahead and pause your video and read through these pages. Awesome reading. Let's go to the next page. Go ahead and pause your video and read through pages 11 and 12 now. Let's go ahead to the next pages. Pause your video and read through these pages now. Excellent reading. Let's go to the last pages of our book. Go ahead and pause your video and read through pages 15 and 16 now. All right, let's go ahead and start answering our comprehension questions. Let's go ahead and start practicing our inferential questions. Here we go. 
first question, how do the stepsisters feel about becoming Cinderella's sister? Now, this question is tricky because you have to look at the pictures and the words to help you. I want you to answer the question, how do you think the stepsisters feel about becoming Cinderella's story, Cinderella's sister? Pause your video and answer the question now. You should have said, in the story I see, when looking at the picture as my text evidence, in the story I see the sisters are making funny faces at Cinderella. So that makes me think, ooh, I'm using my schema to make an inference. So if somebody is making a funny face, that makes me think that they are not excited to be Cinderella's sister and that they might think that Cinderella is weird or they're unsure about being Cinderella's sister. So the answer should be, in the story I see that the stepsisters are making funny faces at Cinderella. So that makes me think that they are not excited to be Cinderella's new sisters. Great job if you used your sentence stem. Great job if you made an inference. If you didn't get the exact same answer as Ms. Rossi, that's okay, as long as you tried your best and used your text evidence in your schema. Let's go to the next question. Why was Cinderella so dirty? Pause your video and answer that question now. In the story I read, that they made Cinderella do all the housework. There's my text evidence. So that makes me think, ooh, I'm gonna use my schema to make an inference. If Cinderella is doing all of the housework, she's probably dirty. So here's the answer. In the story I read that Cinderella did all of the housework. So that makes me think that her clothes are dirty from cleaning all the things in the house. Nice job if you answered that question correctly and tried your best. Next question. Why did the dad give a twig to Cinderella? Pause your video and answer the question now. In the story I read that her father gave a dress and a ring to the other daughters and only gave Cinderella a twig. So that makes me think that the father isn't caring for his daughter, Cinderella, like he did before. Or maybe that makes me think that he likes his stepdaughters more, which is very, very sad, friends. That's, we don't want that's very sad. But if you made an inference on that question, really, really nice job. Next question. Why do you think Cinderella planted the twig at her mother's grave? Why do you think Cinderella planted the twig at her mother's grave? Go ahead and pause the video and answer the question now. In the story I read, or in the story I see that Cinderella misses her mom. So that makes me think that she planted the twig by her mother's grave so that she could have something that would make her think of her mother, or she could have something that she could remember her mother by. Her mother's grave is important to her and her twig is, the twig is from her father. So she put those things together because those are things that are important to Cinderella. My next question, how did Cinderella hear music? How did Cinderella hear music? Pause your video and answer the question now. You should have said that there was a white bird that would appear at Cinderella's mother's grave and sing to her. So that is how Cinderella was listening to music. Nice job, next page. Why was Cinderella told that she couldn't go to the dance for the prince? Why do you think Cinderella couldn't go to the dance for the prince? Pause your video and answer the question now. Now this one, you needed to use your schema from everything that we know about our Cinderella story. So get ready for the answer. In the story, I read that Cinderella could not go to the dance. So that makes me think, when well, I'm using my schema, why would they tell her she can't go? That makes me think that the stepsisters were jealous of Cinderella and didn't want her to take the prince's attention. So I made an inference that the stepsisters didn't want Cinderella to go just in case. 
she was more beautiful than them or in case she got attention from people at the party and the stepsisters didn't. Let's go to the next page. What is the magical element in this story? What is the magical element in this story? Pause your video and answer the question now. The magical element in this Cinderella story is the white bird. The white bird in the story, I see that the white bird gave her a silver dress and gold shoes. So that makes me think, well, I'm gonna make an inference. That makes me think that the white bird is the magical element. Let's go to the next page. What does Cinderella do when she gets to the dance? What does Cinderella do when she gets to the dance? Pause the video and answer your question now. Yeah, you should have said that she danced with the prince, just like in a lot of our other Cinderella stories we read, like Adelita, Rough Face Girl, Cinderella, Sandra Lawn. They get to dance with the prince. That's what she does at the ball or at the uh, dance. Next question. Why does Cinderella run home at midnight? Why does Cinderella run home at midnight? Pause your video and answer the question now. In the story, I read that Cinderella ran home. So that makes me think, I'm going to go back a page. That makes me think that the white bird told Cinderella that she had to be home by midnight or her clothes would turn back to her rags. So she had to run home so that the prince didn't see her in her old dirty clothes. Next question. What is the proof of identity in this book? What is Cinderella's proof of identity? Go ahead and pause your video and answer the question now. In the story, I read that Cinderella left behind a gold shoe. So that makes me think that Cinderella's proof of identity is a gold shoe. Raise your hand if you got proof of identity correct. Ooh, I'm sending you so much energy. Nice job. Let's go ahead to the next page. Why do the sisters try on the shoe even though they know it's not going to fit? Why do the sisters try on the shoe even though they know it's not going to fit? Pause your video and answer the question now. In the story, I read that the stepsisters tried the shoe on, but it didn't fit. So that makes me think that they wished that the shoe was on, that the shoe fit, and they wanted the shoe fit, and that they were trying to trick the prince. Did the shoe, did the shoe ever fit them? Did they trick the prince? Who does the shoe fit? Yes, Cinderella. It does fit Cinderella. Okay, last page. <laughs> How did Cinderella change in the story? So some of you know that we have, in some stories, we have a character who changes. So this is how we show character change. Character, like a character's looking in the mirror, but then that character changes. So in this story, Cinderella has a character change. She has a, and so in the beginning of the story, Cinderella is like one thing, and at the end of the story, Cinderella is something else. So I want you to tell me how does Cinderella change in the story? Pause the video and answer the question now. You should have said in the beginning of the story, Cinderella is sad because her mom died and she has to live with evil stepmothers and evil stepsisters. At the end of the story, Cinderella is happy or excited or astonished or proud because she gets to marry the prince and lives happily ever after. So we have a character change. We have a... Excellent, excellent job, friends, with that inferential question. Really nice job. Now, our last page before we say goodbye, this picture says, we'll keep learning together. So the last thing I want to say, friends, is I know that you're not actually with any other scholars in our class right now, and you're not with any teachers right now, but if you are watching this video, and if you are trying your best, you are learning, and we're going to keep learning together, because every single day, your teachers are going to post these videos. 
So please make sure you're watching Miss Rossi's, Miss Cherney's, Miss Javity's, and Miss Marsh's videos today. You can do it. Your teachers are going to be calling you to check in on you and see how you're doing. So please keep working hard and we will keep learning together. Okay. I'm proud of you, friends. Awesome, awesome job. I'll see you soon.